Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and today we're talking about the best running shoes for the mud. I have to live near Epping Forest. I do a lot of cross country with my running club and basically spend about six months of the year running through mud. So I feel like I've got a good idea of the shoes I like and what makes a good muddy running shoe. Key to it basically is obviously the grip. You need kind of six millimeter lugs or even eight millimeter studs like on these guys. You also want a shoe that drains a bit. I mean, you can get a waterproof shoe, but that just tends to fill with water I find. So I like a nice shoe, lightweight shoe that will drain. Um, and you can get little features like quick lock laces, which make things a little bit easier when your laces are caked in mud to undo them. Uh, so we've got five shoes to go through today, a couple of really good racing options if you want to use them for cross country. Uh, we'll come into why I don't use spikes in a minute. Um, and then there's some for long distance and then a shoe that's kind of good in the mud but you can also use it on the roads and like kind of canal toe paths as well. So the first shoe I'm going to talk about is the Innovate X Talon G210. Now this is, uh, this costs £130 and it's kind of a pure kind of trail, muddy trail racing shoe. It's really lightweight, it's just 210 grams. Uh, the, all of that weight is in the is in the outsole, which has got these eight millimeter deep aggressive lugs for kind of powering through the mud. The uh, upper is very thin, uh, very like drains very quickly. It's just you know purely there to, to be as lightweight as possible and just get rid of any water that you get in your feet. Um, the bottom is kind of is an Innovate's graphene enhanced rubber, which is very durable. So um, even if you have sections on hard uh, on hard ground during your races, it's not going to wear this down too quickly. Uh, the same can't be said for the upper. The upper is kind of lightweight, it's you know, less durable. Like it's a shoe for racing. If you got a lot of training on this, you are eventually going to start coming through this very thin upper. Like I've already got a couple of little marks in it just from a couple of runs in this shoe. So the reason I like it is it's just so lightweight. I don't really use spikes for cross country races just because uh, I don't, I heel strike down hills and there's no kind of grip on the back of spikes, so I tend to just kind of fall over. Um, so I use the kind of lightweight trail shoe like this to kind of shed mud quite quickly. Uh, I've taken this to the Southern Championships uh, in the UK on Parliament Hill and that's about as muddy as it gets, like it's just three laps of just endless mud and um, they kept me upright, you can't really ask for more than that. Uh, so they're fast, uh, they're pretty pricey and they're not all that durable, but if you want a racing shoe for cross country season, this is my top pick. So next up, we've got the Hocker on a, on a uh, Evo Jaws shoe. This is another really lightweight racing shoe, even lighter than the Innovate, and that's mostly because the lugs are a little bit shorter. They're only six millimeters. So it's not quite as good at finding grip on the worst ground, but it is a little bit lighter, and you know, you're not always racing in like three meters of mud like you were, I was on Parliament Hill. So if you have a slightly kind of less aggressive course, kind of a cross-country race in the UK, maybe right at the start of the season, when it's, you know, the rain hasn't really ruined the ground yet, um, this is a good option. Uh, it's just 206 grams. Again, it's quite pricey, it's 110 pounds, but I think this upper, although it's not quite as lightweight, is, is you know, as good at draining as the one on the Innovate, uh, it's probably a little bit sturdier, so it might you know, handle kind of a bit more training, slightly longer races as well. So yeah, that's basically yeah, it's another racing option. Uh, again, cross country season or kind of you know, just general uh, trail races, I think it's when you're on kind of more sloppy ground, this is a really good option. So the next shoe I've got uh, on my list is the Solomon Speedcross 5. Now this is quite a long running line of shoes, obviously it's the fifth edition, it's really popular with runners who spend a lot of time on kind of fells or in muddy forests or muddy ground in general. Um, it's more of a training shoe than the other ones, it's like it's over 300 grams, uh, it's quite pricey as well, it's 120. Uh, although this is one you can usually find in sales, there's often previous editions available so do look out for that. I say that generally for all the shoes on here, like they're all reasonably expensive but look out for sales. Um, the lugs are only six millimeters deep, it's got this kind of chevron outsole, and that makes it a bit kind of better for mixed terrain. Like they will find grip in mud, I've gone in real deep mud with these as you can see, and um, but uh, on the road as well they're not awful, they like, you can still find grip on the road and hard surfaces, you can kind of use this for quite a few months of the year, even when it's not, the conditions aren't at like their absolute worst. A handy feature is uh, these quick lock laces, which you can then tuck away into the lace garage on here when it's not kind of rock solid with mud. 
Um, they're a bit easier to undo and do up uh, when your hands are cold and it's muddy. There's a padded collar again, kind of speaks to the fact this is more of a comfortable shoe you can use for long runs in the mud. There's also a Gore-Tex version of this shoe, um, which is waterproof, but it just doesn't, I've never, it's never worked for me. Like I've gone for a run in the mud, usually at some point water's gonna get in over that low ankle and then it's kind of stuck in the shoe and your feet are getting really soggy. I'd rather just have this version, which drains pretty well. Um, and you know, you go for a run in the mud, your feet are gonna get wet, you're gonna make your peace with that really. Next up, uh, I've got the Saucony Peregrine 10. Now this costs 110 pounds, and again, it's fairly heavy at kind of just over 300 grams. Now, the Peregrines have been a long line of shoes that I've really rated as kind of all-rounder trail shoes that are slightly geared towards grass and muddy ground. Because a lot of all-rounder trail shoes, I think, are better on rocky ground, like they don't really do that well in the mud. The late edition, the 10, comes in a range that includes the Peregrine 10 ST, which is specifically designed for sloppy terrain. That's what the ST is for. Um, I've still just gone for the standard 10, because I, I still think this grips really well. It's got kind of six mil lugs. Again, lots of chevrons, slightly close together, which makes it better on firm surfaces than the Salomon. Um, I've done really muddy races in past editions of the Peregrine, and I've been really impressed with how much it grips. So I think if you're kind of, you know, looking for kind of more durable, comfortable, all around the trail shoe that can handle long races, but also you're gonna go on hard trails, canals, hoe paths, this is really good. Like if you're not just running in the mud, um, you know, it's quite expensive to buy shoes specifically for the mud. This is kind of a better all rounder that will cover you on most terrains. Um, yeah, that's the Saucony Peregrine 10. And then lastly, you've got another Innovate shoe. Uh, this is the Innovate Mud Claw G260. Now this is basically the king of the mud, in my opinion. Um, it's not as lightweight as the racing ones, it's kind of 260 grams, but it is more lightweight than the kind of all-rounder shoes like the Salomon and the uh, Saucony Peregrine. It's got these eight millimeter lugs that are made of this graphene enhanced rubber. I mean, they're so aggressive. They really will always find grip and they're durable as well. You're gonna, you can run you know, the pavements to your forest, to your muddy run and not worry about the fact that they're gonna wear down, but they might be a bit slippy because they are studs. And then that durability is matched by the upper, which is a kind of Kevlar enhanced, um, which I think is stuff in bulletproof vests. Now that's really good because you know, lots of trail shoes, if you keep hitting slippy trails, hitting tree roots, you are going to wear down those uppers and this is a kind of workhorse shoe that can handle long runs in the mud. It's not going to you know, wear down, it's not going to break down, it's comfortable, it's reasonably lightweight, it's just a brilliant, brilliant muddy shoe. It's quite expensive, it's 140 quid, but you are getting that extra durability for that. I do think it's an investment that's you know, going to pay off. The only thing about it is like, I think there are, I would still go for one of those lighter racy shoes for kind of cross country races that are only kind of five miles. Um, but on longer runs, I think, and longer races, this is a great option. Really is, yeah, like I say, the king of the mud. As guys, uh, that's it. That's the best running shoes from the mud. Uh, do like and subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when we put up new videos. And go and check out what else is on the site. We've got a great just general running shoes, uh, best running shoes roundup, which will cover you for the road. Now you've been covered for the mud. Thanks.